Welcome folks to another edition of the Game Hoarder Cooking in the Kitchen. Alright, unlike some of the, well all of the uh, other Let's Cook with the Game Hoarder videos, we're going to be doing the healthy edition now. This is for somebody that uh, maybe wants to drop a few pounds after all the uh, ridiculous amounts of eating bullshit for Thanksgiving and Christmas and the New Year uh, parties that we went to. So... I'm going to show you the regimen that I go on and many other people eat after uh, so much, uh, you know, so much nastiness. So, we're going to start here with breakfast. It's a little after 8 a.m. here. It's a good time to start if you're up at this time. If not, you're going to have to modify that. But what you want to do is, I always line my pan with spray. Spray oil, spray oil, olive oil, canola, whatever you got. Doesn't really matter. The values are all going to be zero. And then I like to get some eggs. And some egg whites. You got to have some egg whites. You can't just eat all eggs. So get some real egg whites because you're going to need them. Get a couple large eggs because you're going to eat them. And what I do is I'll take one or two eggs, break them open, and then I'll fill the rest to a cup, cup and a half of egg whites. So you're getting about two whole eggs and four to six egg whites. And as you can see, I'm about one and a fourth cup. Looks pretty nasty, but that's just the way life is. No one said it was going to be easy getting into shape after Thanksgiving and Christmas. So stop your fucking whining. Man the fuck up. Alright. Chop them yolks up. And at least give it a little bit of taste. If you go pure egg white, that's good too. A lot of uh, gym rats will tell you you want to get one or two yolks in there. So. But if you're trying to lean up, which is what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to shed some weight cut up a little bit, lay off the cholesterol, lay off the yolk, that is advisable. Now you can add a little bit of cheese to this, fat free cheese of course is recommended just to give it a little bit of flavor but I'm just going to go pure egg white, mmm that looks fucking delish. Now what you can do, because this is going to taste bland as ass. You can get some spices. I like to take a little bit of uh, pepper and a little bit of uh, even some cayenne pepper is good too. If you can find the shit. There it is. So get you a little bit of cayenne pepper. Don't matter. It's not going to hurt you. Put on some more more base pepper. Some regular ground black pepper will do. And there you have it, man. We'll come back when the finished product is ready. Now, if you have other things, you can add some vegetables is a good idea. If you got some uh, peppers you want to add, some onion, even maybe a little bit of avocado is okay. Uh, I just don't have any of that on me, so this is just your basic bland egg white omelet. Now normally with my uh, egg white omelet, I also like to make my first protein shake of the day. What I use for that is, of course, I use a scoop of uh, whey protein. This gold standard is good stuff. Gives you about 20-23 grams of protein per serving. Dump a scoop of that in there. You're going to want a cup of raw oatmeal. Dump that shit in there. It's regular oats. None of that other bullshit added in there. Then we're going to take some fruit. With that frozen banana. I freeze my banana so they don't go bad. Then we got open the fucking bag. Gonna get a cup of blueberries up in here. Dump some blueberries in there. And 
me some fat-free milk if you want, or water, even better. Of course, water doesn't taste quite as good. Then again, fat-free milk is, uh, might as well be water. So sometimes I'll add a cup of milk. I usually alternate. I'll do a cup of uh, milk, fat-free milk one day, and then I'll just stick to water the other day. Now, since I freeze my blueberries and my bananas, I don't need to add ice because there, there's enough ice in those to, uh, to give it a nice, thick texture. And you just blend this bad boy up. Uh, making some progress with the omelet here, if you can call it so. I usually like to take it. That's a big ass omelet, by the way. It fills up the entire pan. Take it, flip it, turn it into a wedge. And the shake is done here. It's very purpley from the blueberries. Uh, and that fills up about four cups worth. Uh, and you're going to get a nice. Right around 40 grams of protein, protein from the eggs and the shake. Maybe a little bit over, but your body's only going to utilize, you know, 30, 35 grams of protein, maybe 40, depending on your muscle mass. Uh, anything more than that is a waste. So that's pretty much a standard uh, breakfast for somebody that's trying to really be serious at the gym and lose some, lose some poundage cut up a little bit stay tuned I'm gonna be coming back for lunch we're gonna be having some chicken and spinach for lunch and I'll probably throw together some mahi or some tilapia or maybe both for dinner with some grilled mixed peppers some shit like that so that's pretty much it between meals you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're taking in some kind of uh, energy slash protein every two and a half hours two two and a half hours so what I like to do is I'll have just a cup of protein with some water in between meals it's quick and it's easy I work from home so I have a pretty distinct advantage of cooking meals and stuff when I need to uh, so yeah that's pretty much it and I'm gonna put together a couple other videos of other alternative things that you might want to try eating because obviously after a couple weeks of this every day it gets boring so stay tuned for more cooking healthy with All the right. game time for some more healthy cooking with the game hoarder we're going to be cutting up uh, about eight ounces of chicken uh, into little basically chicken nuggies I'll throw them in the pan and then uh, we're also gonna have a boatload of spinach so let me get the chicken cut up alright so we'll I got my right chicken there. cut up here uh, again with the seasoning you want to stick to low sodium things like pepper all the different kind of peppers uh, lemon pepper is probably okay you can get away with some of that so I usually I'll sprinkle a little bit of lemon pepper on here don't ever use salt I don't give a fuck what kind don't use any of it never add salt to any of your food when you're trying to diet because you're just gonna cause yourself to retain that much more water and then finally, take a big ass handful of spinach and just cover that. And spinach shrinks down to nothing, so I usually I fill up the whole pan like that. And then I'll take some, take some cayenne, and I'll just add it on the top here. And when I start mixing it around, another thing that I personally love is hot sauce and hot sauce is pretty much it's okay certain kinds aren't have a lot of sodium in them but for the most part it's alright to add hot sauce I do that near the end I'll lace my chicken with some and I'll just mix and mash it all together and eat it together so we'll come back when the final product is ready for the yum yum time hey ho hey ho alright go ahead and stir your chicken and your spinach as you can see the spinach literally turns to nothing that big old handful has now essentially turned to this tiny little amount. 
That's all right, though. It's a better way to eat it. All right, and then what I like to do is I'll grab some of my favorite hot sauce here. Got this for Christmas from my Uncle Jack and my Aunt Pat. And I'll just put that on the top there, give it a little flavor. Flav! There you have it, man. Chicken and spinach for lunch. It's healthy. It's as tasty as you're gonna get for being healthy. Stay tuned, folks. We still got din din time to come. I wanted to talk a little bit about vitamins, supplements, things like that. Besides taking the protein, which is extremely essential if you're trying to not only lose weight but gain muscle. And by the way, if you didn't know this, you need muscle to lose weight. It helps. The more muscle you have, the more better your metabolism is off and the more fat you're going to burn. Another great fat burner is green tea all by itself. You can add some lemon juice, that's what I do. It's pretty nasty without any kind of flavoring, but I just add some lemon. Uh, and uh, drink two cups of this a day. Glucosamine, super important if you're lifting weights, especially when you start getting into heavier weights. This helps your, uh, your joint and connective tissue, supports joint cushioning, Make sure you get the one with uh, chondroitin in it. Uh, and I usually take a couple tabs of this per day, 1,500 milligrams. You can pick it up. It's not too expensive, you know, 15 bucks maybe for this bottle. I take a multivitamin twice per day. This is a great one. This is probably the highest recommended man vitamin you can take. This has got 75 ingredients on it. Just one of these pills uh, twice a day and you're set. You don't got to take 300 other pills to get everything else. Last but not least, fish oil gives you your omega-3. Depending on how much fish you eat that's uh, got a lot of omega-3 in it, uh, you would take either higher doses of this or lower. This is also helps with the fat burning process. I usually take a couple of these thousand milligrams a day even though I tend to eat uh, salmon maybe once a week, tilapia a couple times a week. Um, but you still would actually take those even if you did and again I think they even have like a chart which will tell you you know if you, if you eat fish this many times a week then you need to take this much so those are pretty much the basic essentials you're going to want if you're going to take losing weight seriously uh, there's, there's a ton of opinions they're like assholes when it comes to losing weight but Time and time again, every health magazine I've read, every weight trainer I've talked to, every professional uh, doctor of nutrition I've spoke with in the gym, things like that, they all recommend these products here. So, those are the good. All right, folks, this is it. This is Din Din time. We're going to be having some tilapia, which I have thawed out. The nice thing about tilapia is it thaws super quick. These were frozen. I put in some warm water in the airtight baggies and they're thawed within five minutes. We're going to be mixing in with some, uh, having some carrots uh, and some multicolored peppers. Uh, and then I'm going to add some, some hot sauce. This is some Arizona Gunslinger jalapeno pepper sauce. Now again, if you're not into hot pepper sauce, that's fine. You don't have to add this. I'm just showing you what I make. And I'm going to add a little extra oomph today. This is a dried scorpion pepper. This is currently the uh, Guinness Book World Record. Normally you would uh, put a fraction of this into a pot of chili that feeds an entire family, but I'm gonna crumble this all up, it's dried, and I'm gonna sprinkle it all over my, my din din, because I like my fish with some kick. And I also got some real lemon that I'll squirt on there, and some lemon pepper for the tilapia. So I'm gonna get everything, get the peppers and everything cut up. And uh, we'll get it all in the pan. All right, so got our tilapia here. We'll go ahead and put that in. I got a little bit of olive oil in the pan. Got our peppers all nice and cut up. Toss those in there. Just a couple carrots, nothing spectacular.
All right. And then we're going to put a little bit of lemon juice on the tilapia. Well, I like lemony flavored tilapia. Sprinkle some lemon pepper on there as well. We're going to let that sit for a while. In the meantime, I'm going to crush up the scorpion pepper and get it into a fine powder. Get it ready to uh, top the fish as well as uh, some of this jalapeno pepper sauce. Also courtesy of Uncle Jack and Aunt Pat. Alright, and here we are. There's the tilapia lemon peppered with some uh, carrots and various peppers here. I'm going to go ahead and get some of this hot sauce. This jalapeno hot sauce all over it. Just dump the whole bottle out. And then I have my crushed scorpion pepper here. You probably don't want to touch this. If you do, make sure you don't touch your genitalia or uh, anything afterwards. This is about a third of a dried whole pepper here. It's going to be hot. It's going to be real hot. So you can see the flakes of scorpion pepper all over the food. It's going to be tasty, but it's going to have some kick. And also, uh, peppers are actually good for you. They help, uh, they're, they're a thermogenic uh, increase enhancement. So uh, eating hot peppers, hot sauce, stuff like that actually also is a kind of a fat burner as well. So, uh, anyways, I want to thank you for watching some healthy cooking with the game hoarder in the kitchen. Stay tuned. In my next video, we'll be doing some alternative meals. This is just one that I've uh, been doing for years and years now, and it works. If you can stick to this kind, these kind of meals for you know a few months, you're gonna drop a shit ton, a ton of pounds. Just make sure. You're also eating, uh, you know, some small meals in between. Uh, really, it's about portioning. You don't ever want to eat too much portions at once or it's going to uh, store fat. So the key is having smaller meals. You know, of course, if you're adding vegetables, things like that, healthy food, you really can't eat too much of that. Uh, and always, if you're... If you're going to bed, it's good to eat a little something healthy before you hit the hay as well. Cottage cheese is uh, ideal. The casein protein in it is uh, super good for you. If you can't stand cottage cheese, there are various other uh, methods of eating it. You can add maybe uh, some fruit to it. I add some dried almonds, uh, non-salted of course, and that helps give it some more texture besides the cottage cheese texture. Or I'll put it on a bed of romaine. Or spinach leaf so um, but I don't have any cottage cheese right now I need to pick some up so anyways thanks again for watching hope you enjoyed